for a long time, I was pretty confused every time I would see reviews of the original Life is Strange that talked about the game not having any sort of effect on the reviewer. In particular, Downward Thrusts, uh, games that aren't that great, kind of threw me for a loop. His video isn't flawed in any way, it being an opinion piece, but I've wondered why reviews of the original game are so widespread between it being hailed as a triumph and it being just kind of... meh. I noticed that in watching other people's reviews of the game that people will review it differently based on one key component, obviously with exception. Whether they played the game as it was being released, or whether they played it post-release. And oddly enough, that makes all the difference when talking about the game, because it influences the way that you play. See, when I played the game as it was being released, I, I jumped in after episode 2. There were about 6-8 to eight weeks between release dates for subsequent episodes, and the subreddit community, tumblr community, theory community was bustling. Everybody was creating theories as to what they thought was happening or what was going to happen. You'd find these long-winded essays about the significance of minor plot threads and how they might tie into the ultimate conclusion of the game. You also had people data mining the games to find leftover files or files for future episodes that may provide the community with some clues. The only way to find all of this information was to play the shit out of these episodes. By the game's end, I had about 60 hours logged into a 10 hour game. Releasing a game episodically like this ensures that exploration is actually utilized. The subreddit community was basically expanding on Life is Strange's genre of the game by making figuring out the ending its own kind of ARG. Everybody was comparing and contrasting clues and perspectives together. It felt like everybody was pooling efforts to solve this big, massive puzzle. So compare this with the flip side of the coin. People who played the game post-release surely aren't devoid of any of the emotional impact the story had to offer. They still got to beat up Nathan. They still probably killed Lisa. They still had to find the bottles, but all in an experience that they could finish in a day's time if they were in a mood to binge. Every time they encountered some kind of mystery, then they would just say to themselves, Huh, that was weird. I guess I'll just keep playing and figure out what that was by the game's conclusion. When the plot is the puzzle and you know that all you have to do is continue to find the answer, it takes all of the detective work away from the player. The game becomes just a narrative at that point, which people still seem to praise, but I remember a huge community of people attempting to find answers that unfortunately people who play the game post-release don't really have the opportunity to indulge on. I know a lot of this sounds very much like a gatekeeper mentality of, oh, the game will never be to you what it was to us, and I really don't want to rob anybody of their experience. I just think that Life is Strange is a very unique game in its presentation, and the differences in experience are worth talking about. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm really trying to do more of these. I know I owe a lot of you a review of Before the Storm Episode 2, and I promise that it'll come sooner or later. And if you're a new viewer, thanks for watching. If you want to gently caress that subscribe button, nobody's gonna mind. I also stream sometimes, usually past 9pm central. Come hang out, you can crash on the couch.